How you doing? Welcome to another video. Now, this week, um, after last week actually, well I say last week, it was probably last three weeks where I've been trying to get pictures of badgers and film of badgers. And that was quite a gruelling film to make actually because it took an awful lot longer than I thought it would. Um, as you can probably see from that video if you've watched it, I was yeah probably getting ready for a rest at the end of it. And when I'd finished it, I decided, you know, I could do with a little bit of a break. So I spent a few days sitting on the patio because we've got really lovely weather at the minute and drinking a few beers. And one particular night I was sat here drinking a beer and something flashed over my head and I thought, what's that? And I realised it was a pipistrelle bat. And um, I remembered that when my daughter was younger, we used to come out and, and listen to the bats with a bat detector. I thought, ooh. That's interesting. Um, anyway, as I sat there, we got more and more bats, and in the end, there was probably five, six, seven bats whizzing through the garden uh, for about five, ten minutes, and then they tended to disappear. So I thought, oh, this is probably worthy of a little bit more research. There could be a potential to do a video here. So, although it was quite hard research to do, having to sit here and drink a few more beers over a few more nights, I thought, well, you know, I'll put myself through it, uh, which I did. And um, joking aside, you do learn quite a little bit about the sort of movements of the bats and, and the fact that they have, although their movements are erratic, they do have certain things that they do every night, more or less. So what I found was that they, were, they would come out of a roost, and I think probably they're roosting in the old horse chestnut trees a bit further down the road. And then they would basically come out and hunt over the back gardens here myself and my neighbours for about 10 to 15 minutes and then they would just disappear and then as it got dark you might see the odd one. So sitting here watching them I could see that they tended to like to come through. We've got a really low fence between myself and my neighbour here and they tended to come like coming through there between the two gardens whizzing over my head or coming back towards me. So I thought that would be probably a decent place to set up the camera and try and get some shots. Now, I never do, having done this before, I knew I was going to need to use flash, uh, but obviously, if you watch the Badger video, you know I got the flash and everything ready to do that. So that was the plan, and uh, yeah, have a look and see how I got on. So as you can see there, I tried various setups before coming back to literally uh, the Sony a7R 3 on a tripod with the 90mm macro lens. Um, I did try the 200 to 600 at 200, but because what that does is it means you've obviously got a much smaller area to catch that bat in. And um, because there's not hundreds of bats coming through, it's really difficult to hit that that bat um, in that small area so with the 90 millimeter it just gives me a wider shot okay I can't get as close to the the bat and I'm having to crop the image but you know at least I'm getting it in shot the other big problem we've got is obviously you can't autofocus because it's dark so generally what I'm doing is I'm setting up quite early and what I'll do is I'll focus about five to six meters away from the the, the camera um, which is just the other side of the fence. Now, one of the things that you have to remember with that is what I did initially and what I have been doing is focusing on something on my next door neighbor's garden. 
which is fine. But obviously when I then set the camera up and what I'm doing is angling the camera up because the bats are obviously coming up higher up in the air. As you can see from that, if I'm focusing on something at, at on level with the camera and then I angle the camera up, that is obviously going to mean that the bats are going to be closer to me before they're in focus because that distance is changing. Obviously what I'd have to do if I wanted the same distance um, is focus on something further away so that when I tilt the camera, let's bring in that closer and into the position I want. So yeah, you've, you've got to be careful that what you don't do is set the focus on something directly in front of the camera, then raise the camera and then using a cable release, you're watching the bats come through and you, you're firing a shot off when you think it's at where you're focused. That will actually be in a different position now because you've angled the camera up. So always be aware of that, um, you know, before you, you take the shot that you're going to have to factor that in that it's going to be a little bit closer the bat is before it's in focus. So you need to set your flash um, at the recommended level for your particular flash. With mine it's one two hundredth of a second. Bearing in mind that your actual flash, the light of the flash is going to freeze the image, not your shutter speed. One problem I did run into is when I first started trying to do this is that and I think this is right from reading up, I didn't really know a lot about it, but if you're trying to shoot with flash and you've also got quite a lot of light in the sky and you um, shoot through the lens, so let it do it, the camera do it automatically, what happens is that your flash will expose an image and it, what appears to do is the camera also tries to expose an image as well using the shutter speed and you tend to get like a blurred image when you think you've, you've nailed it right on, it's in the right position, everything, you still get a blurred image. So what you end up doing is using manual flash. And what I've been doing is setting the flash power to 128th or a 64th of the, the um, maximum power of the flash. And then I'll mess around with the ISO just to bring the um, image up so I've got more um, perceived light if you like that seems to be working. I've also messed around with the aperture a little bit and what I've found is I like to shoot at about f8 just to give myself that little bit more room for manoeuvre with obviously manually focusing on a certain area. If you shoot at f2.8 or something like that, you've only got a small area that you know the bat's got to be in, to be in focus. If you've got a, a, a smaller aperture, you know, um, f8 or f11, then you've got a little bit more room for error where the bat's going to be in focus. So how do you get the shot? Well, as I said, what you need to do initially is focus, manually focus on a point where you know the bats are coming through. And then really I just use single shot, I use a cable release, um, and then all I'm doing is waiting for the bats to come through at that point. As I say, what helps me here is because I've got quite a light background with the sky, there's a lot of sky in the background, I can see the bats coming towards me. So it does give me an idea of where they're going to be and then you know it does give me a chance to get a shot if you've got a dark background don't forget the bats are dark you just will not see them um, it'll be too late and you'll be you know you'll you'll just not get anything in focus at all it is a lot of trial and error you'll miss a lot of shots you'll get a lot of close calls you'll get um, you know some that you think you caught but they were just off the side if you want to try um, and sort of up your success rate a little bit what I would say is use a wider angle lens you'll get a smaller image of the bat but you know you do give yourself a, a wider area to hit that bat in as, I, as you probably saw I tried the 200 600 and at 200 I just wasn't getting anything um, ideally I'd like something around the 135 I think just to have a go um, just to see whether I can get a slightly bigger image so it's, it's really a lot of trial and error, but you know, if you keep at it, you will get some shots. Right, so hopefully you found this video useful. Um, you know, if you want to have a go at bat photography, then it, it will give you a, a way in to do it. And if you enjoy it, then perhaps you can um, try one of these more expensive methods, if you like. Um, you know, where you're using infrared triggers and multiple flash units and slave flashes and your infrared triggers firing the camera and the flashes. So, you know, you can really set it up on a certain point in the sky and nail that shot completely. 
really I just wanted to do it with the minimal kit that I've already got just to show that you can actually do it and get a reasonable shot and I hope I've shown that in this, uh, this short video. If you've got any questions then obviously stick them below. As I say I don't think there's a lot out there on bat photography. Um, it's quite a specialised area but you know if you've got bats in your area it's something else that you can have a go at with the kit that you've got and I hope I've shown that. Anyway I shall see you next time for another video. As always, if you've enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, please think about subscribing. I'll see you next time.